Welcome back to the fountain of Hippocrene. Today we are going to recite this brilliant erotic poem by John Donne. John Donne, who lived in the late 16th century and early 17th century, wrote many love poems during his early life and many religious poems later on life. None of his poems were published while he was alive but his manuscripts were very popular then. He is considered to be a master of metaphysical concept. Now what is a metaphysical poetry? Metaphysics as the term denotes is a study of abstract concepts. While meta means beyond and physics means science of concrete things, altogether Metaphysics means a subject that deals with things which do not have concrete shapes. Metaphysical poetry mainly deals with such concepts as love, fate, soul, death and God. Common elements of metaphysical poetry include the following Argumentative expression of emotional constants, use of wit and metaphysical conceits, conversational tone, colloquial language, striking blend of thought and feeling, amalgamation of disparate images, and irregular rhythmic pattern. To his mistress, going to bed was written most likely between 1593 and 1596. The poem plays on the traditions of love poetry. The speaker offers elegant and elaborate compliments for his mistress praising her tremendous beauty, but unlike other love poems of its era. To his mistress going to bed does not beat around the bush. The speaker wants to have sex with his mistress, preferably as soon as possible. As the speaker articulates his erotic desire, the poem exposes some dynamics between the speaker and his mistress. He not only wants to sleep with her, he also wants to possess and dominate her. Unsavory as it may sound to those that are squeamish, but to the one who delights in the pleasures of flesh, it is nothing short of an amorous exploit. His mistress going to bed. Come, madam, come. All rest my powers defy, until I labor, I and labor lie. The foe oft times having the foe in sight, is tired with standing though he never fight. Off with that girdle, like heaven's zone glistering, but a far fairer walled encompassing. Unpin that spangled breastplate which you wear, that the eyes of busy fools may be stopped there. Unlace yourself, for that harmonious chime tells me from you that now it is bedtime. Off with that happy busk which I envy, that still can be and still can stand so nigh. Your gown going off, such beauteous state reveals, as when from flowery meads the hill's shadow steals. Off with that wiry coronet and shoe, the hairy diadem which on you doth grow. Now off with those shoes, and then safely tread in this love's hallowed temple, this soft bed. In such white robes, heaven's angels used to be received by men. Thou angel brings with thee a heaven like Muhammad's paradise. And though will spirits walk in white, we easily know by this these angels from an evil sprite. Those that are hairs, but these our flesh are bright. License my roving hands and let them go, before, behind, between, above, below. O oh, my America, my newfound land, my kingdom, safeliest with, when with one man manned, my mine of precious stones, my empire. How blessed am I in this discovering thee. To enter in these bonds is to be free. Then where my hand is set, my seal shall be. Full nakedness, 
all joys are due to thee, all as souls unbodied, bodies unclothed must be. To taste all joys, gems which you wear in use are like Atlanta's balls, cast in men's views, that when a fool's eye lighteth on a gem, his earthly soul may covet theirs, not them. Like pictures, or like books gay coverings made, for laymen, are all women thus arrayed, themselves their mystic books, which only we, whom their imputed grace will dignify, must see revealed. Then since that I may know as liberally as to a midwife, shew thyself, cast all, yea, this white linen hence, there is no penance due to innocence, to teach thee I am naked first. Why then what needst thou the having more covering than a man?